it's still surreal to tell you I was in Yemen. What's going on in Yemen? The Arab world's poorest country. 13 years old and you want to fight? A civil war has been raging in Yemen. It's a proxy battle between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Houthi rebels backed by Iran fight the Yemeni president backed by a Saudi-led coalition of Arab countries. The worst humanitarian crisis in the world. The largest ever outbreak of cholera is the children who suffer most. Nearly every single Yemeni child. The damage is absolutely devastating. Security controls here. So I'm back from Yemen. Came to a hotel to take a shower, to shave. Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick video to share some thoughts about the whole trip, the whole experience for me. And I want to just clarify a few things that I'm pretty sure after seeing the series, you might have some of these questions. So let's get started. How's life in Yemen? Thanks God we're still alive. This will be the final video of Yemen. I want to talk about two things. One, challenges. Second one, strengths. And we'll finish with my final thoughts. Okay, so challenges. Millions of people have been displaced from their homes since the conflict started. People had a normal life, a job, kids were going to school, had a farm, fresh vegetables, eggs. They needed to move away. We're talking about millions and millions of people displaced. It's a sad reality, but we can't deny it. Yemen is facing, obviously, the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. Just to give you some numbers, like 80% of the people, approximately, they live below the poverty line. Over 70% of the people rely on humanitarian assistance. Just imagine all this and 50% of the people they are facing famine so there's an extreme scarcity of food over there when I think about these numbers I'm kind of speechless but this is also a reality Yemen is facing the worst cholera outbreak in the world ever since the conflict started they started to run out of safe water and millions of people these days they really don't have safe water and the country doesn't have everywhere a sanitation infrastructure to stop the spread of cholera. Some of the challenges, obviously there's much more to talk about, but uh, I don't want to remain a lot on the negativity about this because I think with all the videos and the series, you could already tell some of the things on the ground. <laughs> but if we switch to the next topic that I want to discuss with you is the uh, strength or positivity in all this. I came to realize that Yemen is a very important place for religion purposes so i don't know if you believe in a, any kind of religion you will know that noah mentioned that yemen is the land of milk and honey and the three wise men presented the baby jesus with myrrh and frankincense from its mountains some other people also claim that it's the home of queen Sheba. but it's crazy to think that yemen is more known these days for petrol and coffee production so the next kind of strength i see here is markets and cities when we think about markets, there's something that Yemeni people always chew, which is called cat. This is kind of a narcotic. There's a lot of cat markets, you know, in Seyu, Tarim, and, and different cities. It's a very cultural thing, and probably over 70% of the people are constantly chewing cat, this plant, according to them, helping them to, to have a fresh mind, to make better decisions, and, and all that. So this is very common. When you approach this market, some people get very sensitive if you're taking pictures or photos, but then you shake your hand and start talking, and then they're, they're cool about it. This reminds me also of my country. Argentina, because in Argentina, a lot of people like me were always drinking mate every day as a company. It's more like tea and coffee. It's really like a ritual why we drink mate. And I felt the same when I saw this cat, this plant, that everyone was following it religiously. <laughs> it was mainly in the afternoon from what I've seen, but maybe some people do in the morning as well. But they were always like, you know, chewing and making like a big ball on one side of the of the cheeks. As in Argentina, it's just matter. This is our company. I guess it's nice to see that, that some countries still keep some rituals. Okay, I can understand them as well because when you see this plant, you think, what is this? Like, why are these guys? These guys are under the kind of a weird substance or something like that. And, and, and it's the same with me when I drink mate and they see this sherba mate, the herbs, they feel like, what are you carrying? What are you drinking? 
there's another place called Shiba. Again, you probably saw in the videos this. When I saw it for the first time, I was speechless. Just stunning. Seeing that kind of architecture, like uh, with this shape, some buildings go up all the way up to 29 or 30 meters. And you need to think that this is mud brick, probably 500 years old, 600 years old, some of those ones. It's probably the oldest or one of the oldest metropolis in the world to use this vertical construction. And then there's also towns like Sif, where you can see an impressive architecture. They have so many different viewpoints. This is some of the hidden gems, I think, about Yemen. That Because it's an elevation, there's a lot of uh, mountains, valleys and all that. So you can keep changing from one place to another, different viewpoints. And, and you can take really beautiful photos if you are into that. Only locals know about these viewpoints. I was doing like a little test uh, opening Google Maps and what is this place? What is this place? It was not even in, the, in Google Maps all that kind of stuff and locals were telling you yeah you need to go to this particular place it's here and there and i was like wow just incredible only locals will know about all these spots to take beautiful photos as well to appreciate the whole panoramic views of these beautiful towns and people generally are very friendly as well in those towns and then there's this place called wadi Tawan, which means the desert valley I don't know if it was the right pronunciation but that that's a place which is absolutely stunning Stunning. So this beautiful valley has an open area with desert and you can see all the Rocky Mountains and all these villages built on huge boulders and again mud brick construction. Really really incredible. If you're an architect or, or an engineer, how do you even do these calculations? It, <laughs> I struggle to understand that piece but yeah that place blew my mind. Absolutely fascinating. Again there's so many cities and towns that you can name so I'm sorry if I'm not naming few but uh, this were probably some of those ones that, that, that stay in my mind as well as markets right there's so many markets for everything and then the final strength that i want to mention is the people here in yemen people in yemen are as friendly as you can imagine when you are a tourist you get special attention they try to talk to you ask you about your life the first thing that they will say is how are you? How are you? You know, this is one of the first things you learn in English and they want to try to practice their English and then where are you from and what you're doing here and you start a little conversation. But they're very, very curious about that tourists because there's not a lot, right? I try to blend in to be more like a local. As you saw in the videos, I let my beard grow. It's very uncomfortable for me, super itchy and all that. But uh, I try to dress like locals as well. But yeah, it was obvious. At the end, they knew I was not a local, but it's just one of the tactics, if you want, to blend in. And sometimes kind of a, some security protocol, if you want, to make life easier also for the people on the ground with you and all that. On the other hand, it, it is clear that the country is going through a very rough situation. I could tell when I saw people in their eyes, there was this, this feeling of, uh, of sadness, uh, disappointment, but still smiling, trying to see some positivity in the near future that the situation can change, playing on the streets, uh, adults and kids, because kids obviously play in football, which we discussed a lot about Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo and so on, and adults playing domino. I didn't even know they liked this game. I used to play when I was a kid as well, but they were such a big fans and, and they, they are very loud and, you know, like uh, striking the chips, saying, here I am. I'm I'm playing the four, I'm playing the three, I'm gonna win and they're very passionate. There's someone actually writing the scores. It's a serious thing and anyone can play, right? It's incredible to see. The fact that Yemen has conflicts, making it one of the most dangerous countries in the world, doesn't mean that the local people are like that. The majority of people have nothing to do with that. They're trying to provide for the families, for health, make a living and be happy, like you and I, right? Like in any country in the world. Anyway, I hope in this series you could see some of that and I really want to thank all the people from Yemen who were open to share their opinions, their lives, what they do, and also to the people who took care of me, including the people who organized the trip for me, our guys on the ground and security. Finally, I want to thank you all for watching this because I truly feel privileged to have had the chance not just to visit Yemen, but to capture some of it and share it with you. To be fair, it's not an easy country to visit today, but I hope this changes in the future. By the way, I'm trying to visit every country in the world. So if, if any of these sounds interesting to you, I would love to have you on board with me. So feel free to click subscribe. <laughs>